Hello. There are 300 million people in the United States, and about 20 million of us have some degree of hearing loss. This makes up roughly 9% of our population. Deafness and hearing loss is often called the hidden disability because there are no obvious physical signs until someone begins to sign, speak, or read lips. We are going to assist you in recognizing and communicating with people who are deaf or hard of hearing. There are two distinct groups with hearing loss. Hard of hearing is defined as a functional loss of hearing, but not to the extent that the person must rely primarily on visual communication. Deaf is defined as a person who must rely primarily on visual communication, such as sign language, writing, and lip reading. The degree of hearing loss varies for each individual. This video provides helpful tips for interacting with a wide range of people who are deaf or hard of hearing. But remember, it's important not to generalize or assume everyone fits in the same category of hearing loss and ability. Since there are few visible cues to hearing loss, it can be difficult for police officers to know when they are approaching a person who is deaf or hard of hearing. The easiest way to know is by communicating with them. Keep in mind, you might feel awkward or uncomfortable with a person who is deaf or hard of hearing, and remember, they might feel uncomfortable too. Being able to quickly assess the hearing ability of an individual can prevent a misunderstanding from turning into a hostile situation. I'm sorry, officer. I can't see you. I'm deaf. I'm sorry, officer. I can't see you. I'm deaf. I read lips. I still can't see you. I can't see your lips. The flashlight. The flashlight made the hard for me to see your face. As you can see, the flashlight makes it hard for a deaf person to read lips. The light blinds them and they cannot see or understand you, making communication ineffective. Please be considerate of the situation. Be sure communication happens in a well-lit area where you can see each other clearly. This will help make communication more effective. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. The reason I pulled you over is because the right tail light is there. You understand me now? Speedy! Me! Speedy! Although deaf and hard of hearing people may lip read, on average only one third of the spoken word can be understood by lip reading.
do not rely solely on lip reading to convey important information. If verbal communication is chosen by the deaf or hard of hearing person, use gestures and facial expressions along with your spoken message. Ask questions to be sure that you understand each other. If the person gives an inappropriate answer, they might not have understood you. It may be necessary to write notes. American Sign Language is a foreign language and has its own syntax and grammatical structure. Many signers lack good English skills, especially in reading and writing. Lip reading and writing notes may be used to convey short messages but should not be used for legal purposes. Here are a few other helpful tips for dealing with lip reading. Don't cover your mouth or chew gum. If you have a mustache or a beard, it will be difficult for the deaf or hard of hearing person to lip read if he or she has lip reading abilities. Speak at your normal rate, or a bit slower if you tend to speak quickly. Also, only one person should speak at a time. Use short sentences and simple words. This scene demonstrates four important steps that can help you. Number one, withhold judgment. Number two, assess the nature of deafness. Third, assess language ability and ability of the individual to communicate effectively. And fourth, determine and, if necessary, request or use a proper communication method. Here is more information about the deaf and hard of hearing community. The majority of deaf people use American Sign Language as their primary mode of communication. The language shares no grammatical similarities to English. You might think it's a broken, mimed, or gestural form of English, but it's not. It's its own language. When you communicate with someone who is deaf, you are communicating with someone who speaks a foreign language, like Spanish or French. Using an interpreter is the best way to ensure effective communication. If you see someone wearing a hearing aid or a cochlear implant, don't assume the person can hear and understand you. Some deaf and hard of hearing people wear hearing aids or cochlear implants to help them with the environmental sounds, not speech. Try to interact in a setting with the least amount of background noise. Awareness and sensitivity is the key to being effective in any situation. What time did you get 
Deaf and hard of hearing people tend to tap on the shoulder to get someone's attention. Please be considerate of this cultural trait. If you, as an officer, prefer that they do not touch you, communicate that to them. I don't understand what you're trying to say. What's yes, your, this is my dad. That's your dad? Okay, yeah. what's your name? My name is Emily. Okay, and what's your dad's name? His name is Chris. And Chris saw what happened? Oh, yeah. Can you ask him to tell me what happened? He said he saw a man steal his laptop, the man's laptop. He said he looked like a nerd, and he's about skinny. Do not use family members, especially children, as interpreters. They may lack the vocabulary or the impartiality needed to interpret effectively. A certified interpreter has received all of the proper training and has the skills to handle delicate matters, especially in legal or medical situations. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I, I don't understand what you're trying to tell me. I said uh, I saw someone steal a man's laptop. He, he saw what happened? Yeah. Is this your dad? That's my dad. Okay, what's your name? My name is Emily. Emily, how old are you? I'm 13. You're 13? Ask your dad if he needs a certified ASL interpreter. Yes. He's in he needs one? Okay, I'm going to make a phone call, okay? okay. Stay right here, all right? Okay, it's Jack went down here at the crime scene. Yeah, we need an interpreter down here to right away. A certified interpreter. About 10 minutes? Okay, thanks. Okay, we have an interpreter, certified interpreter on the way. It's gonna be about 10 minutes, so I don't need, I, I need him not to go anywhere. He needs to stay here. As you can see, the officer was able to contact his department to request for a certified interpreter. His department already has a system in place where they are able to get an interpreter in a short manner. Does your department have that system up? If not, I encourage you to discuss it with your department. That way, you can get a certified interpreter effectively. Jeff, this is Melissa, the interpreter. Oh, great, great. Uh, do you have your certified I ASL card on you? Great, awesome, thanks. Uh, Melissa, this is Chris and his daughter Emily. I need you, Chris is my witness here, and I need you to ask him what he saw in his own words, okay? Um, I saw a man coming out. He was in a rush. He looked like he had a laptop. I'm assuming he stole it. He looked sort of nerdy. Um, I'd say he was about 5'6". Um, pretty slender. When using an interpreter, look and speak directly to the deaf person, not the interpreter. I need you to ask Chris in his own words, tell me what happened. Um, I saw a man coming out, he was in a rush, it looked like he had stolen a laptop. Um, he looked sort of nerdy, it's pretty slender. Talk at your normal rate, or slightly slower if you speak fast. Only one person should speak at a time. Use short sentences and simple words. Do not use jargon or abbreviations. If someone doesn't understand what you have said, try saying it in a different way. Always check to make sure the deaf or hard of hearing person follows what you're saying. everything okay? We got a call. Is everything okay? No, come on, come on out. Come on out. No, come on out. Come on out. Big grand's out. Just your hands. 
Man, what happened to your face there? What happened here? Are you are you deaf? Are you deaf? I don't I don't understand what you're saying to me. Do you understand what your mom's saying? Well, yeah. She said that her boyfriend mean and her boyfriend beat her up. Beat her up. And it my mom was trying to tell me. Okay. Ask your mom if she needs a certified ASL interpreter to come down. Yeah, she said yes. Okay. Hey, it's Jacqueline down here at the 315 start. Hey, reference my call. This is domestic violence between deaf partners. I need an ambulance and an ASL interpreter to come down here to help interpret. Claire, you said five minutes on the ambulance, 20 minutes on the interpreter. Okay, I'll relay that to him. <clears throat> Will you let your mom know the interpreter's on the way? And we'll just yeah. check out her face. Minutes. Yeah. minutes. The officer in this scene did the right thing. First, he evaluated the situation. Second, he decided the most effective way to communicate. Third, he recognized that the child is emotionally involved, unable to be impartial, and not qualified to be an interpreter. And fourth, he recognized that his signing skills were not effective enough to communicate. And he made the right decision to call for a sign language interpreter. Just wait, wait. With patience and sensitivity, the officers evaluated the situation and determined the most effective way to communicate. They used gestures and short written messages to diffuse the situation until an interpreter arrived to the scene. I did it. I did. Come on in. Thank you for showing up. What's your name? It's Loretta. Loretta. I'm Officer Jacqueline. Can I see you on a card real quick? Nice, nice to meet you. Thanks for coming. Great. Thank you so much. Um, Loretta, this is Shelby and this is her daughter Ashley. I need you to ask Shelby, who's the victim, in her own words, what happened today. Well, my boyfriend and I, I mean, we got into this big fight. It was over some really stupid things. I mean, I don't understand why it happened. It happened so fast. I mean, all of a sudden, he just punched me. And that's how I got this bruise on my face. And unfortunately, she, she is involved. I was trying to protect her and keep her out of the situation. But, I mean, here we are. Okay. Okay. Did your daughter see what happened? Yes, did she witness she did. it? Okay. Who called 911? Okay, stay calm, okay? Just one minute, one minute. He's good for it. He's going to go. Okay. Let's do something too. Um, Is that the interpreter? That's the interpreter. Yeah, okay, what's her name? Veronica. Okay. She doesn't feel comfortable coming up by us, but she'll communicate from over there. That's fine. Veronica, I'm going to ask him to, to do some. Uh, things for me, okay? Alright, Veronica, tell him that he's going to be placed under arrest for domestic assault, and I'm gonna, what I need for him to do is to stand up, place his hands behind his back, and let him know that I understand that he talks with his hands, but I'm not going to be asking him any questions till we get back to the station. So what I'm going to have him do is stand up, put his hands behind his back, he's going to be placed into custody. We're going to go to the station. You're going to follow us as the interpreter. As soon as we get to the station, the handcuffs are going to come off, and he's going to have his opportunity to tell his side of the story. But he's currently under arrest. Yeah, I, I mean, I understand. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Ask him if you would, please, calmly stand up, place his hands behind his back, for me, please. 
Brian, could you just tell him to put his hands behind his back, please? Communicating with a person who is deaf or hard of hearing does not have to be difficult. Using the instructions and tips provided in this video will help you address any challenges you might face when serving members of the deaf and hard of hearing community. Remember these four steps when working with deaf and hard of hearing people. First, withhold judgment. Don't make hasty decisions. Second, assess the nature of deafness. Third, assess language ability and ability to communicate effectively. Ask yourself if you can sign or gesture your way through the situation. And fourth, determine and if necessary, request or use a proper communication method. With patience, sensitivity, and a willingness to communicate effectively, you will have success handling situations with people who are deaf or hard of hearing.